This episode discusses the dynamics surrounding the realities of raising your hand against a Mexican Mafia member. Okay, so you're a loyal Sudeño soldado putting in work for the fellas. What happens when a Mexican Mafia member directs you to take out another made member? Do you ask questions? Do you verify with another member? Is it optional to make this move? Or is your life on the line if you don't carry it out? These are all questions that deserve answers. Like navigating a mine-infested landscape, listen carefully as I take you into a specific area many guys do not want to look at. When we are done, you will understand where you could potentially stand if called upon to take out a big homie. Keep in mind, I was once part of the old school way of doing things. In my time frame, the fellas did all the hitting and the use of gang associates was so rarely undertaken, you would think there was a Mexican Mafia rule against this practice. Now the playing field has changed drastically. The sharks are visible as they swim in their waters. In a future episode, I will cover most Mexican Mafia reglas, their hardcore rules, and demonstrate how the fellas themselves continue to violate almost every one. Number 10 on their list of sacred rules is how only a member can murder another member. This means anyone who is not a mate carnal cannot, I repeat, cannot raise a hand against a Mexican Mafia member. Unless you're like that dumb animal blinded by oncoming headlights, what I am going to reveal in this episode is not really a secret. Even the knowledgeable Sureños, and especially the highly placed camaradas, no, this has been happening beginning sometime in the 1980s. The deployment of Sureños to whack made members is optically not politically correct in the Mexican mob world because it sends a message to any gang member that it's okay to move on a made guy. On the other hand, if a made member brings along a Sureño when sending a member to Brazil, that has been historically acceptable because technically a made man was there as the primary hitter, supposedly, and the Sureño was there in a support capacity. So let's get this right. You may co-conspire with a big homie. You may even fire bullets or physically aid and abet in his demise. That's okay but you better not take on a mission on your own or with other Sureños because that's when you run into trouble. So let me begin with a modern day hit that occurred on July 10th, 2016 inside Calipatria State Prison. Emiliano Zapata Lopez was also known as Tonito from Wilmas. Tonito was a Mexican Mafia Harbor area boss who served La Eme for decades as an unblemished member and masterminded lucrative gang territories from his prison cell. Like many incarcerated members, Tonito utilized his trusted wife for facilitating the movement, direction, and generation of revenue on the outside from extortion, drug sales, and other criminal income. The fellas discovered Tonito's wife had been collaborating with the law and advised Tonito to take care of her. The mere fact she is alive even to this day should be an indicator the law enforcement people she was working with had a handle on how to protect her, so it is very likely Tonito could not have touched her even if he wanted to. Whatever the case, he was held accountable. The MF felt they had given him ample time to take her out with no results. The members who orchestrated the hit were recorded on cell phones discussing the use of associates to carry out the hit on Tonito. The operation took place without a flaw. Tonito, who had a team of bodyguards around him, was separated from his men when a group of hitters created a diversion by attacking the bodyguards. A separate group was given the specific assignment of handling Tonito with a direct warning to make sure he was dead. 
Officers reported 22 inmates involved in two separate incidents, the diversionary attacks and the main attack on Tonito. Tonito was isolated, pinned against a fence, and stabbed over 80 times by two loyal Sureños known as Stomper and Spider from Barrio Monrovia. By the way, for some of you old-timers like me scratching your heads, there is a barrio in Monrovia. So here's the update on these performing Monrovia Sureños. Spider was hit in New Folsom and ultimately did the smart thing and right thing by extracting himself from that world. His picture is blurred because I do not have permission to display it. Stomper is shown in this police booking photo and solid inmate sources confirm he has survived two homicide attempts at Kern Valley State Prison and at Corcoran, the same facility where Popeye Roman was taken out. For those of you who followed the Popeye episode, the straw that broke the camel's back in his case was his disagreement to have Stomper hit. So listen up, Sureño Nation. If you are ordered to undertake an assault or murder of a made MM member, you may wish to consider calling in sick. Fake a heart attack if you have to. But understand that while the big homies rant, rave, argue, and engage in their politics, you will never know you are next in line for that green light until the hounds descend upon you. On the one hand, you did a good job for La Causa, the Eme cause. On the flip side of that coin, you gotta go, homie, so pack your bags for the one-way flight to Brazil. Manuel Torres was known as Tati from La Rana. While he was doing time in the feds, the Mexican Mafia had a federal commission headed by Champ Reynoso, Willy Bobo Govea, and Black Segura. After extensively examining all the aggravating evidence, these three men issued the final stamp of approval versus Tati, and his end was merely a formality. On April 22, 2005, the ADX Supermax Federal Facility in Florence, Colorado, experienced its first official homicide during an exercise period of Mexican Mafia members and associates compatible with each other. With cameras rolling and recording every second of footage, Tati was beaten and stomped to death by MM member Richard Santiago, also known as Chuco, and MA associate Silvestre Rivera, a.k.a. Chicali. Both were convicted of this crime and sentenced to life at the ADX. In this incident, Chuco was already a maid carnal, whereas Chicali was not. Some of the feedback is that Chicali was already on the fast track for membership. Acting as support for Chuco surely did not hurt his resume. Unlike the previous case with Tonito, where the assailants were all Sureños, the exception to the rule about a non-member lifting a hand versus a maid carnal is highlighted in this incident because the principal hitter was a fellow member. Chicali very likely didn't have to sleep with one eye open, as they say. Victorio Murillo, who was Tati Torres' La Rana homeboy, ran into the Mexican Mafia political buzzsaw and was caught on the short end of street politics against Mariano Chuy Martinez. On April 4, 1998, Victorio was caught slipping in a Goshen, California parking lot approximately 200 miles north of L.A., and was gunned down by M.M. MM member Charles Lee Woody, a.k.a. Chacho from Cantarranas. His accomplice was Eddie Joe Annette, also known as Inch, from the Compton local Stresse gang. Inch was a notorious Sureño enforcer who performed several hits for the M.M. but was himself green-lighted by the fellas along with Chacho. And there you have it. You're screwed if you do, and you're screwed if you don't. Unless you have a death wish, brain isn't functioning properly, or enjoy being used and abused, be extremely careful when you sign up to take out an MM member. Chances are you will have no prize awaiting you at the finish line. Instead, the odds are you will find grief, headache, betrayal, 
and a bullet or prison shank with your name on it. Proceed with caution. All of these examples are bona fide Mexican Mafia sanctioned hits, with no question that each target had a killing coming, according to them. But the role of Sureños and how that is perceived in the gang world is the sensitive issue at hand. The recent episode touching on the hit on Papay Roman featured a made Mexican Mafia member, Spy Alvarado from Lenox, utilizing a non-member, Eddie from East Los, to assist in the fatal stabbing of Popeye. After the Eme tamales are tossed to and fro, does Eddie receive sufficient love and understanding from the fellas and live to see another day? Will the Eme members who supported Popeye view him as an expendable sureño who must pay with his life? Let me pose a follow-up question to all this madness. Are you equipped and prepared to swim in shark-infested waters? Are you ready to jump on that truck with no brakes heading downhill, with you not letting go of the wheel, crashing and burning with the life you say you chose? Okay, does your family have an adequate burial insurance plan? Last time I checked in my neck of the woods, a decent burial should run between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. After all, the family members usually are the people footing the bill to bury their loved ones. And no, this is not an infomercial for Rose Hill's mortuary. This is a reality check for the tough guys out there who are looking to sign up for that life. It's also real talk for the OGs who cling to that worn out teddy bear. Let go, dude, and let the Lord bless you with a new life. His arms are wide open. Because the deceased have indeed moved on to their final destination, let's lift up their families that they may seek refuge and salvation from the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. I also want to pray for the perpetrators mentioned in this episode who are still alive and lost in that crazy world. Our awesome God forgives them if they are ever inclined to reach out to Him. Stomper and Spider, Chuco and Chicali, Chacho and Inch, Spy and Eddie, may the Lord rock your world like he did to me 44 years ago and open your eyes to his forgiveness, love and mercy. May the Lord touch Viana Roman and bring her to her knees to receive you. Give her the strength to forgive her father's killers because she cannot do this on her own. We thank you in the name of Holy Jesus. Amen. By the way, this is the correct photograph of Viana. Excuse my mistake in the other video and thanks to those who caught the error. You have to keep us old folks in check. Out.